Alhamdulillah. If anyone has any specific questions uh, from any of the lessons that have preceded, any topics uh, that you need clarification on, uh, please click the raise hand button. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akhbarana anna alladhi yujahid fi sabilillah wa yakhudh alghanimah ويأخذ من القنيمة بموافقة ولي الأمر فيذهب من أجره الثلثين ويبقى له الثلث لمن أخذ غنيمة ومن لم يأخذ الغنيمة فأجره كامل انظر في هذا الحديث العظيم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يبين للأمة أن هذه العبادة إذا انتفع منها الإنسان من حيث الغنيمة وهو قد خرج والقصد إعلاء كلمة الله خالص لا لرياء ولا لسمعة إلا أنه مع هذه النية الطاهرة وهذا الإخلاص إلا أنه إذا أخذ من الغنيمة وانتفع فيسقط من أجره الثلثين ويبقى ثلث ومن لم يأخذ فله الأجر الكامل هنا يدرك الإنسان المعاني الشرعية بأن يكون الإنسان على ما كان عليه الأنبياء والرسل في إنفاقهم لدين الله وما كان عليه الصحابة وعلى رأسهم الصديق الذي كان يبذل في الإسلام وصاحب اليد الطويلة في الإنفاق وخدمة الدين إلى أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كلكم كافأناكم ما خلا الصديق رضي الله عنه يجازيه الله بما قدم للإسلام فهنا ندرك اتفضل uh, So after praising Allah and sending the salat wa salam upon the messenger the Sheikh began by mentioning this issue related to jihad if somebody was to go out in jihad for the sake of Allah in the time of the Prophet وسلم, under the Muslim rulership of that land that he is from. Then the Prophet وسلم, clarified about the issue of ghanima. Ghanima is, of course, that wealth uh, that is taken from the uh, army that had been defeated. So the Prophet وسلم, in an authentic hadith, he clarified that whoever uh, does this jihad and takes from the ghanima and he benefits from the ghanima, which is something permissible, that whoever takes from it and benefits from that ghanima, then he then two thirds of his reward for the jihad is gone. Two thirds of his reward for that jihad in the path of Allah is reduced and only one third of the reward remains for him from Allah. Uh, so this is something to consider and recognize and pay attention to that if somebody does this action, even if it is for the sake of Allah and it is done correctly under the rulership, the Muslim rulership of that land that he is from and who is, has the authority over him, that if he takes and benefits from the ganima, then two thirds of his reward will be reduced and he will 
have one third remaining. And from this example that we can see and benefit as people of Sunnah that the importance of spending and giving forth your, from your effort in order to aid the religion. And we have from the best examples of that, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Abu Bakr, or what he said uh, openly sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we have recompensated all of you, meaning whatever anyone had done good for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, we have repaid or done enough in equivalence or enough back to return the favor to all of you, except as siddiq except as siddiq except Abu Bakr siddiq for indeed Allah will reward him or Allah will recompensate him. Radiallahu anhu. هذا الأمر أمر عظيم جدا لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من بيانه كما في كتاب الله بأن لا يسأل على بيانه وتبليغه الأجر الله سبحانه وتعالى يجعل هذا المعنى أصيل عند الأنبياء والرسل وكذلك كان الصحابة فلذلك يقول شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية لم يأخذ لا من الأنبياء ولا من الصحابة ولا من التابعين ولا من أتباع التابعين من يأخذ الأجر على بيان الدين وتعليم الدين So from the characteristics of the Prophet وسلم, and from the ways how the Prophet وسلم, was and how, as his da'wah was is that he did not take anything from the people in exchange for teaching them and conveying the message to them. And this was the way that Allah ordered him and all of the prophets and messengers before him, that they did not ask from the people anything in exchange for conveying the message, teaching, giving da'wah. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said that it is not known it is not known from any of the prophets and messengers or from the Sahaba or from the Tabi'een, the students of the Sahaba, or from the Atba'i Tabi'een, the students of the students of the Sahaba. It's not known that any of them took any payment in exchange for clarifying and teaching the religion. ولذلك هناك فرقان بين دعوة الحق عن سائر الملل والنحل فأهل الحق العلماء أهل الحق يقومون بالبذل لخدمة الدين ولا يأخذون من الناس شيئا ولا يسألون الناس شيئا لأنهم يريدون ما عند الله يريدون ما عند الله ولذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لصحابته من يقاتل في سبيل الله ويأخذ من الغنيمة فذهب من أجره ماذا؟ الثلثين هذه هي دعوة الحق أن المسلم السني ينفق على اعتقاده وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون ولذلك لما سأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لبعض الصحابة الحاجة الفاقة الفقر فأرادوا الصحابة أن يأتوا بأموال جاء عمر بشطر ماله وقال اليوم يكون السبق لي وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون فعندما أعطى علم أن كما بيّن الصديق لما سأله النبي قال ماذا أبقيت لأهلك قال أبقيت لهم الله ورسوله أي أنفق كل ماله هنا علم عمر لأنه لن 
يسبق الصديق رضي الله عنه هكذا أهل السنة أهل تضحية يعملون ويكدون لا ينامون كسالة لا يطلبون العلم السن الأثري يعملون جاهدين في كسب المال الحلال وينفقون على اعتقادهم وينفقون على الواجبات الشرعية التي كتبها الله عليهم كفى بالمرء إثما أن يضيع من يعود نعم so this issue of spending from your wealth from your time from your effort this is from the clear differentiating factors between the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah and all of the other da'wahs. من حيث العلماء أولا وطلاب العلم. And so the أولا so the people that should be upon this first and foremost should be the scholars and the students of knowledge that they strive to spend and pay their give their effort in whatever ways that they are able to without asking from the people in order to support them rather it should be the scholars and the students of knowledge first and foremost striving to contribute to contribute and to do what they can with their wealth and their effort and we have from the examples of uh, the sheikh mentioned also before this example how allah ordered the muslims to make sibaq that we race and compete with each other in completing and performing righteous deeds for his sake. So we have for, for exa- for the, from the examples, the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ uh, advised the companions to uh, help pave or uh, provide sustenance for some Muslims that had come that were very poor. So some of the companions went to get their wealth. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he came with half of his wealth. He came with half of his wealth. And he thought to himself that no one will be able to beat him in this. That no one will bring better than what he brought. Can I tell you something about Nobody. So this was his, Umar's specific intention that he would win over Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. That Umar felt that he would spend more than Abu Bakr would spend in uh, caring for these poor Muslims. So when he came to the Prophet Wasallam, he found out that Abu Bakr had brought all of his wealth. And the Prophet Wasallam asked him, what have you left for your family? Abu Bakr said, I left for them Allah and his messenger. And from that moment, Umar radiallahu anhu, he realized that he would not be able to outdo or outperform deeds, uh, especially specifically in the spending, as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was able to do. ولكن هنا مقاطعة ويس لو جاء أحد منكم اليوم وقال أنا أصنع أريد أن أصنع ما أص ما صنع الصديق أقول له لا يجب أن تنفق على نفسك وعيالك. ومن كان في ذمتك والديك زوجك وبعد ذلك إن فاق منكم شيء تنفق ولكن كفى بالمرء إثما أن يضيع من يعود جاء صحابي قال أنا أريد أن أوصي بكل مالي في سبيل الله أنكر عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى أن قال والثلث والثلث كثير قال ابن عباس من؟ وصى بثلث ماله فقد خالف السنة لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال والثلث كثير فلذلك لو قال إنسان أنا سأصنع كما أصنع كما صنع الصديق أقول له لا تصنع ذلك ولكن الصديق هو أعظم رجل بعد الأنبياء والرسل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول اقتدوا بالذين من بعدي أبي بكر وعمر لو وضع إيمان الصديق في كفة والأمة في كفة رجح الصديق رضي الله عنه وارضاه إذا أريد أن أشير أنا عذرا قاطعت 
خوفا من الفهم الخطا نعم نعم so the sheikh said he wanted to add here uh, specifically about this hadith that if any of you listening today wanted to do what Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu did meaning give all of your money away all of your wealth away then he would say to you no don't do that because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam likewise said that it is sufficient for someone in sin that he wastes away the people that he is responsible for meaning that he does not provide for those who he is responsible for and a man when before he died he wanted to give Sahabi. away yeah, a man meaning one of the men with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a noble companion radiyallahu anhu he wanted to give away all of his wealth he wanted to write a wasiya a will that once he dies he wanted all of his wealth to go in the path of allah so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade him from doing that forbade him from doing that and he he sufficed by saying only a third and a third is still a lot only one third and a third is still a lot because the man still had the situation of having to provide for those people that he was responsible for and ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu that about this issue of wasiya uh, he understood that even if somebody gave away a third of their wealth in a will that that would be to that that would be against the sunnah because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used the words wa thuluthu kathir that even one third is a lot now so upon the sunni the muslim is that they strive to uh, be from the people of the upper hand they strive uh, to work hard they put their efforts forward they don't uh, lay back and sleep all the time but they put their efforts forward so that they can uh, take responsible they can provide for those who they are responsible for uh, that you should and again this is uh, any, uh, a summary of what the sheikh said together that uh, you should work hard so that you can provide for yourself provide for your children your wife anybody else that you are responsible for and then thereafter that you are able to uh, spend and aid the religion in the ways that you are capable of and remember that all of this spending is worship all of this spending is from ibadah it is all from the worship of allah عندما تضع اللقمة في فم ابنتك هذه قربة إلى الله. Even if you, when you put the small, uh, bite-sized amount of food into the mouth of your daughter, then this is getting closer to Allah. From getting closer to Allah. جزاكم الله خير إذا في كان في سؤال فتفضل. So if there's any question, uh, preferably specifically related to the lesson, then you can click the raise hand button. Likewise, I'll just add that the Sheikh mentioned uh, regarding why, uh, the, regarding, uh, why uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was able to give away all of his wealth. He had a specific special status that is different than the rest of us. That Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, for example, he, was, he is the one that the Prophet وسلم, said that if the Iman of Abu Bakr was put in one side of a scale, and all the rest of the Iman of the whole Ummah was put in the other side of the scale, that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, his Iman would be heavier. Naam. And the many uh, other virtues that we know of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Naam. So no one has uh, clicked the, uh, the question button. Jazakum Allah khair. See you inshallah next week. Sorry to make uh, late the lesson today i apologize from you well inshallah we will see you next week we just got one ah, okay